Hey, my name is Jesus Castello, and in this video, you're going to learn how to use the Faraday Ruby Jam to help you make HTTP request in Ruby. First thing you need to do is to install the Faraday Jam. Just jam install Faraday, and then require Faraday like this. Then you can make a request using Faraday. Just type Faraday like this, then get, and the URL that you want to request. HTTP example.example.com. And this we return our response object. So we can save that in a variable and print it. So there we go, we get our response object, as you can see there. And there are a lot of things going on in here, but there are a few methods that you can use to get information from this response object. Let's take a look. The first method that you need to know is the status method. With a status method, you get the status code from the response. What is this? This response code tells you whether the request was successful or not. So 200 is okay, means okay or success. So it's working in this case, but if we try a different URL that doesn't exist, we get the 404 not found code. So that means that this resource, this page doesn't exist. And that's how you can check using the status method. Now, another method that's very interesting and useful is the headers method. And the headers method returns this hash, and we know it's a hash because it has these curly brackets, and it has the response headers from the server. And it has a lot of useful information, like for example, we get the content length. This how many bytes are coming back from the server. We get the content type. This is the type of content that is being sent to you from the server. And in this case, you can see we get HTML. This could also be JSON, JavaScript, an image, many other things. And you could check this header to to know what kind of data you are working with, right? Now we have also the date. This is the server's date. And we have some caching headers. So for example, expires. This when this resource, when you are supposed to request it fresh because that's when it expires. And we have also the catch control, which is similar to that with the max age. The last modified, which is the last time this page or this resource was changed, and the server name, which is that. If you want to get some of these values, you can use the key, for example, date, like that. And there we go, that's the server's date. So that's the headers method, very useful if you want to get information about the response. This is like meta information about the response. And the actual content that you get back from the server is in the body. And you access it with the body method. And in this case, that will be the that will be a string with the HTML from this page. And that's how you get it using the body. So that's the three methods that you need to use. The status, the headers, and the body. That's how you're going to work with the response object. Now we can make other kinds of requests besides the get request, because the, the get request is used to request information, right? That's why it's called get. You're getting information. What kind of information? Well, you can get CSS files. You can get images. You can get 
JSON, you can get JavaScript. All of that is information you are requesting from the server. And to request information, you use get. But the other method you can use is post. Post allows you to submit information to the server, so you're sending information. What would you use this for? Well, one use for this is to submit a form. So for example, you can have a login form and the way you submit the username and password is using a post request. So you will send the username and password and the server will respond back and tell you whether you're logged in or not, right? And this will also work for things like a contact contact form and you will submit uh, your email and some kind of contact um, message, right? The message you're sending. So to send that information, you pass a second argument with a hash like this. For example, message, I like chocolate. How about that? That's what I am sending when I make this post request. I'm sending this message to this page. So that's a post request. Remember, get is receiving request information. Post is sending, submitting information like forms. Now, one of the great things about Faraday is that it's very configurable. You can change how it works. Let me show you what I mean with an example. In here, I have this Faraday new, and notice that it says new now, it doesn't say get or post. So I'm just creating a Faraday object, and what this allows you to do is to customize or personalize or change the settings of the object, right? So the way you do that is by passing this block and this block yields F and F is the Faraday object you're creating. So it's yielding itself. And what's happening here is this is where you make this settings change. This is where you customize your Faraday object. What kind of things you can change? Well, you can change the adapter because Faraday is what we call an adapter gem. So it's adapting other gems and what that really means that it's a wrapper around other gems. For example, the, the default is the net HTTP library because it is the built-in Ruby library for making HTTP request. And since it's built in, that's the default. So you don't have to install something extra other than Faraday to make it work. But you can change this, you can change the adapter. So Faraday, we use another gem to actually send the request. And one of the, one of the supported gems is Typhoeus. Typhoeus, like that. So you will need to install the gem besides Faraday. Uh, what's going to happen now is that Faraday, instead of using the built-in net HTTP client, is going to use this. And uh, Typhoeus is supposed to be faster because it's built as a C extension. So it's using C code, C level libraries to make the request. And that's going to be more efficient, it's going to be faster. Good thing is that you don't need to change anything else to do this change, right? You could be using Faraday I in your application and you decide to change the adapter, you only have to make the change and nothing else. So that's a nice, nice thing about Faraday. And uh, not to use this new object. At this point, it, it hasn't made any kind of request yet, right? Because we haven't called get. So now we can use it normally. We can just do Faraday.get and we make our request, right? So that would be our regular request, just like before. 
Cuando respondes a status, or body, or headers, and there it goes 200. And of course, the post is also the same. As you can see, there. So that's how you change the settings of your Faraday object. One more thing you can do is to send or upload a file. Let me show you how you can do that with an example. Here's the example. We have this Faraday block. And the only thing I added is this multipart. This allows you to send a file in combination with this thing right here. So this part is reading the file and preparing the file for upload, for sending. And the file is this file. This is the file name. And this is the file type. So if you have this extension, you will need this file type. If you have another, like a PNG, you will have to change this. And this is the URL where you want to send the file. So for example, it could be HTTP sample.com slash profile, something like that. And if this page is, accept is taking, accepting file uploads, then it will take your file and save it. So that's how you do that. So that's the Faraday gem. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please give me a like so I know that you like this video. And if you want to keep learning, visit my website rubyguides.com and subscribe to the newsletter so I can send you my best content to help you keep improving your Ruby skills. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.